Old Blast with Don and Kevin is a show where we share opinions and interviews about topics that interest us. We generalize a lot, and we do realize that some of the topics we touch on, there are people on the fringes that are not part of the group we are generalizing. In order to spare the listeners having to hear us constantly caveat our conversations to recognize that there are other groups and opinions out there, this is our blanket statement stating just that. We know. Also, we are not on any side. We are not left, right, good, evil, up or down. The purpose of the show is to both provide entertainment and also to expose you to new ideas and opinions to cause you to think, research, and form your own opinions that you can share with others. We very much thank you for listening. May 24th, 2021. You're listening to Oblast with Don and Kevin. I'm Kevin. And I am Don. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I got to mess with the audio levels a little bit today. Uh, I don't know why everybody's hot on the hot. Yeah, Donnie's Donnie's actually hot uh, for once too. Uh, so we, we'll we'll get that. We're gonna get that straightened out. We use a level level later anyway. But if we're too hot while we're recording, then we'll get distortion. And uh, we'll be metal, yeah. Um, I, I am working on an intro for the show. Uh, we got some music donated to us uh, by um, this guy Brenner, who's been a long time right. listener of the show. Uh, some sort of orchestration type stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, I'm getting a, a guy that's a voice work guy. He's going to do. Um, uh, and sort of a, just a quick little intro for us rather than me saying it. It just kind of helps to have a couple of different voices. So it sounds a little bit more professional. And then once we do that, then I'll maybe work with that guy to also uh, do our outro uh, in uh, little bits here and there. So we're trying and, and uh, this is where your Patreon money goes, folks. We're um, yeah. spending it to uh, better the show and, and make things uh, nicer for everyone when they listen. So yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you. And if you want to be a Patreon subscriber and get all the shows that we do, uh, go to uh, patreon.com forward slash VGN. No, that's not right, is it? Maybe it I, is. No, I, I think it is. I think it's VGN uh, for uh, video game news. And uh, yeah, you can get on there and um, it's only $2 a month. We're not like other places that want like your soul or something or, or they're going to promise to send you like a, a gift of like a wine wine glass or something with, yeah. with the name of the show on it um, for like a $40 tier or some bullshit. Like we're not, right. We're not, we're not doing that. You, you give us money. We'll send you like a pack of matches and we'll like scribble on it. If you want. <laughs> yeah. We'll send you a boomerang from Australia. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, but we do, but we do actually put the money into the show. Nobody's, nobody's um, doing anything. Like we're not, driving Ferraris or anything over here. It's it's just a low amount of money that, that helps um, promote the show. And we do shows every week. We try to. Now, speaking of which, next weekend is Memorial Day. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, when we have a holiday, uh, I'm going to not do the show uh, right. because I need um, a mental break. Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not so much from doing like I could talk to Don all day. Uh, it, yeah. it has nothing really to do with the show or, or Don or anything. Although coming up with topics to talk about can be a little bit, uh, um, uh, you know, it, it was the same problem we had with Midwest, right? Like we can talk about things, but eventually it's like, well, we already talked about that. And we already talked about that. And we already talked about, you know what I'm saying? So it right. runs out of stuff. And, uh, so you kind of need to cool out a little bit here and there in order to, um, uh, put stuff together. Now, Danny does the, um, tumbling tale. Mm -hmm. as well as the um, Donnie Diary. And yeah. so uh, if we get those, we'll pad it out so you'll get one of those uh, when we don't do a show. Um, but, uh, yeah, it you know, it doesn't happen very often. We record on Monday, so there's not a lot of – there's some Monday holidays, obviously, but there's not a lot. And so, um, you know, it'll just be when, when that takes place because Kevin needs a break too uh, mm -hmm. and done. But um, I work two jobs, and, like, if I can get a freaking day off, it's nice to be able to, you know – to just chill out and not have any responsibilities. Like for instance, this Memorial day is coming up, but I'm actually on call for the bank. So mm. like I still have to get up at um, like seven in the morning 
and yeah. uh, do a bunch of um, sort of like checklist work. Uh, and then um, I also have to, as well, I have to um, be on at uh, um, 11.45 in the evening uh, yeah. in order to um, re-enable some things. So it's it's kind of it's kind of cr- so it's just like the very beginning of the day and the very end of the day I have to be at work. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's yeah. not really a vacation day, but uh, yeah. So that's kind of why. Like I just kind of want the middle of the day to kind of go. Anyway, that's just kind of where we're at with that. So hey, Don, here's your note. Here's your notice. We're not going to do a show next week. Um, oh, I wish I would have known sooner. I don't know why are you so hot, dude. That's with all the oh, leads. I see what the problem is. I'm moving the slider around, and it's the wrong one. See? All right. I turned down Downey a little bit more. I'm sure you sound fine to everybody. It's just like, I just don't want distortion. You're just right. kind of getting up there on the... I don't need to sound like the rhythm section of Motorhead. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, um... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just looking at the... I'm just looking at the... No, I'm- I'm, I'm making noises in case you're checking the levels. Yeah, I was looking at something. That's like why you had a switch turned on and I didn't, but it's just the way that I have the board set up. I never want to reconfigure this board again because it was like a real mind bender because <laughs> Donnie comes in on a different PC and I wire it all up to a hardware mixer and then it all goes out and then it gets encoded. But my audio, you know, has to go to Donnie into his machine so he can hear me. And then yeah. it has to go... Uh, out to the other PC where I'm actually speaking with Don's audio. Uh, but what I have to separate both of our audio streams so I can turn Don and I up or down depending, uh, you know, because he's remote, he's not in the same studio I as I am. So it's, it's, it was, um, uh, I got this from rich, uh, this mixer board, um, Akuma, <laughs> yeah. um, from Rageworks, uh, cause he sold it to, to me a while ago. You know, it's been working really good. It's it's got a little bit like it like some of the switches probably need to be clean, you know, in the sense of like they're not dirty, but you know that you know how knobs get like sometimes you know they he get a little f- flaky, you know. He may have left some peanut butter in there or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, whatever. It, it works good for the show. Uh, but yeah, every we're always I'm always trying to improve things, make things a little bit better. So anyway, yeah. this week we're going to talk a little bit about music. Ooh. And uh, I got, you know, two things I, I kind of wanted to talk about. Because, like, you know, Dan, you had mentioned on uh, uh, the, if people hadn't heard the tumbling tale, uh, Don had told the story about how he first met me. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, Did uh, you like that one? You, yeah, you remembered a lot of things correctly. And a lot okay. of things I didn't even remember myself. The only thing I, I, you, you, you got wrong was um, uh, we, we didn't meet in lunch. We met no, in was, we met in homeroom. In the homeroom room. was in the cafeteria for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. So it was basically the same. I mean, I don't think you had a plate of food, but neither did I. Why would no, I be no. sitting there drawing on a notebook? You right, know what I mean? A, yeah, yeah. Other than that, and I didn't listen to King Diamond just yet, but I would. Um, yeah. Actually, Don is responsible for uh, helping get me into metal. Um, Weird. My my brother, because in ninth grade, my brother. Uh, was in the Navy at the time. And we didn't communicate too often. I mean, I was lazy. I wasn't going to write him anything. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, I just right. wasn't a letter writer kind of guy, you know? I mean, like, I do write, you know, but I just like, dear Brian, how are you? How is the Navy? Like, I yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm just not a person who can be, like, sort of small talky and disingenuous. Right. And my brother wouldn't have put up with it anyway. He would have been, stop being dumb. You're gay. <laughs> uh, so, um, coming. But he did eventually send me a, a mixtape, and uh, um, it was like it starts off kind of like I'm not. It's not like light rock or anything. It's just kind of like rock, you know. And then it goes into metal, and then it gets into like heavier metal, and then it's got punk on it and everything. And uh, it did have King Diamond. It had like Motorhead's Orgasmatron, Lethal Tendencies by Hollow's Eve, um, <laughs> that kind of stuff on it. Sky. And, and, but it was like, um, it took me actually a while to, uh, get into like those heavier songs, you know, uh, because I hadn't been exposed to that. Uh, it, it wasn't like heavy, like on the internet, you get music everywhere. If you're young and you're listening to this, you get music everywhere. But like when we were young, like mm. 
if you didn't go and buy it, the radio didn't play it, right? Like, like it, it was not – eventually metal was played on the radio, uh, Z-Rock yeah. and things. But initially, like, there was no, like – and I think when I came – back to Ohio cuz Z Rock was only around for like a year or something. When if I came that, back yeah. to Ohio like in ninth grade ninth grade like Z Rock was gone. So there was no metal unless you were like up at like midnight listening to like um buzz college or yeah 98.5 have a metal show at night. Yeah, or college radio maybe. But right. if you didn't know what you were looking for even, right? You wouldn't hear it. You just wouldn't be exposed to it. There was just right. there where would you have heard metal? Like you were lucky that your brother you know were able to bring you you know kiss and all that kind of stuff out and be like, you know, listen to this, dude. Um and they didn't even really do that. My brothers never really were like, "Hey, listen to this or listen to that." Oh, I really? just they just listened to it and I got so used to hearing it. Yeah. You know, right, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Just like, and plus you're kiss gonna listen to this. That's basically how it worked, right? Like, it basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, right. And, and, and so like, you know, eventually when my brother came from back from the Navy, I don't know if that was like, I think it was like in the summer after ninth grade or something like, um, it was warm. He had on a leather jacket. That's all I know. Yeah, it was, yeah, <laughs> it was warm. I think it was like the spring or summer or something like the, of, uh, you know, after ninth grade. Um, it wasn't like when I was first in, uh, um, uh, high school. Uh, something like that anyway. And, and so, um, uh, yeah. And then I got exposed to a little bit more music because that's why my brother was all, he's just constantly like, let's go to the record exchange. Let's go buy music. You know, the guy never had a job, but if he had money, he would go buy music all the time, et cetera. But before all that happened, like I would like in high school, Don and I would hang out and I would, um, go to the comic book place occasionally with Don and he, Don got me into comic books. Uh, and because I don't know, that just wasn't like a, again, that wasn't like a thing. Like I grew up poor, like, you know, I grew up poor and then I went to California to live with my mom and that was a disaster. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to Cleveland and my dad was incredibly broke. Like he owed money to the IRS to the point <laughs> where like they had him on like a weird payment plan kind of thing where he had no money to breathe. Like he just right. had to like pay them. It's like a garnishment, I think. Right. Uh, but like, he like would tell me things like, you know, they don't give me money to get a haircut. They don't give me money to get a newspaper and stuff. And it's like, well, I, I can say I need to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no extras around here. So, so like, but when we lived, you know, in, in, a, in any of those extremes, yeah, I, friends that I had, maybe had a comic book, maybe I'd be like spending the night at somebody's place or something. I'd read a comic book hanging out over there. But I, you know what I mean? Like they, a lot of comic books were kind of throwaway in the beginning too. Like they, like, you know, those early ones where they were just like the villain of the, the month or something. Um, right. Individual stories for each month and stuff. Right. And not very depth. Like the stories didn't have depth, right? right. They were making them for little kids or something. And it, it took... It took a while, I think, for comic book narrative, maybe not every book and everything, but I, I mean, would you say, Don, that when like we were starting to read comic books in that Grim Jack era, that's kind of when more of the independent comic book places started to show up, right? Yeah, um, like the late, late 80s, eight, eight, mid 80s. Yeah, right. Something like that. It, it seems Dark like Wars, that. Like you image. didn't you didn't hear about a lot of that in like the set. There may have been. Like I'm sure there's always been underground comics. Oh yeah, and yeah, definitely. But these were kind of like um, comic book publishers that were trying to become mainstream, competing against the Marvels and the DCs, right? Trying to get different kinds of stories and stuff. They were like, we're coming at it from a different angle. They were trying to be more realistic. Right. Right. Exactly. And so you'd get like more adult narrative. And and um, and Don's brothers would collect some stuff like Rom the Space Knight, you know Marvel. Like when you first read like Rom the Space Knight in the beginning, it's it's <laughs> just ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like it's a robot that's gonna come to Earth and like, oh Rom, save me, you know? And uh, my blaster will get the die ass and ah, oh, it's Rom. He, you know, he's a dude in a suit of armor. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> he's a dude in a set of inside of Space Knight armor. Right, okay? that he can't get out of. That he can't get out of. Because his body is on another planet somewhere. It's about to get, well, it might get blown up. I don't want to spoil it. No, right. <laughs> yes, well, nobody can read it. There's like, <laughs> it's a trademark dispute been going on forever. It's yeah. like, Rom was one of the big, for some reason, it, he was one of the big Marvel 
Um, it's not really a superhero, but you know what I mean. He was one of the bigger characters in the Marvel universe, not the you know Spider Man and everything, obviously. But he was one of the first to probably connect everybody because he he would he would go into everybody else's books or or other characters would come into you know what I mean. It's like right. one week, one month it'd be like the X Men, and then the next month there's the Fantastic Four, or there's Wolverine, or there's so and so, or there's you know what I mean. It's like he's always crossing paths with everybody, and of course everybody's like, who's this guy? Who's this face guy? Let's fight him, <laughs> right? You know. And and the thing about Rom was that he um uh he was based on a toy. So it, yeah. Parker Brothers, I think, made a toy that was terrible. It was a terrible toy. And it was just like a cross promotion. But apparently the comic was very popular. And uh they sold it for I don't know how many issues, a hundred issues or something. Seventy five. Seventy five issues, yeah. And uh, uh you know, yeah. when you only get one a month, that's a number of years there that they yeah. continue to produce ROM. And then, you know, the licensing you know, they were like, you know, Marvel no longer has it. So Marvel can't reproduce it. You can't find ROM in the MCU universe. Now I, I have heard that the rights to it have maybe been bought by somebody and Marvel might, yeah. might be able to get access to it if they want, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what kind of dollars and cents, but it was kind of just a problem where it was like Parker Rose, I think was bought by Hasbro or something. And, uh, different people had different parts of this thing. Right. And, and so now somebody has it and I think they can license it out, but I don't know. You know how it is. Like it's owned by Disney and Disney would probably just be like, they don't want to license I, it. They'll just buy it. I think nowadays they could make a really good Ron space night movie. They could, but you know, it's almost, it's not really for kids though. That's the other. No, I mean, you just, it's not that you, you're not making it for the kids. It's right. For the right. Kids. Like, who he is. Cause like he's, if you've, you, I'm sure most of you that are listening have never read Rom, so I'm just going to go with that you don't know anything <laughs> about it. But like, it's just me and you, right? He's this robot that you know. He's like, like Don said, he's a human, but he's like this robot that like is a silver robot, but he can pull in these different weapons from uh, another dimension at will. And uh, he would be fighting demons that are on Earth, and they would take the form of humans. And, but humans uh, couldn't tell. What's that? But humans couldn't tell. Right, humans he, he, couldn't he, tell he, that they were demons. Right. He had a way of being able to tell if they were what, and and but the humans, it didn't. The humans never knew. So every time he'd show up, he'd be like, eh, and he'd zap, and they'd be like, "Yep, that guy's a rat." And he'd go and shoot him, and everybody'd be like, "What are you doing?" Right. It's like right. you don't understand, it's a bad guy. <laughs> right. Ron would be hunted by the humans because he was, you know, killing. They thought, you know, he was killing people and stuff, and and he was sending demons to limbo or something. Yes. Um, and Marvel, like right around. And that was even earlier than than Don and I were reading comics. But right around that time is when Marvel <laughs> started to get a little bit more um, interested in appealing to adults. I think, like, The Brood, you know, with the X-Men was around that time, too, which was also another, like, that was an alien ripoff, kind of. But it was also kind of gross. Like, you know, it impregnated Wolverine with, like, a baby inside a skeleton and shit. Like, um I don't know. Like Marvel was starting to get there, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of adult comics. So yeah, I hung out with Don, but Don always had, um, cause it, and we're supposed to be talking about music, but this is how the show goes. <laughs> right. we, we spin off. We spin off. Once we say something about comic books, it's over. Yeah. Um, uh, but Don would let me borrow some music. He got me into like sabotage and docking. And, um, I was already listening to rat, which is kind of like the rock I had mentioned. Like you could hear some rat on the radio, um, that quiet was about riot. as heavy as you could get, right? Round and round, you know what I mean? Quiet, quiet riot, quiet riot. Yeah, like yeah. real, real early. Um, stuff, which really was just pretty close to just being rock and roll more than metal, yeah. That's all know? it was. It, it, it's just you know they, they just had a metal look about them, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like the like Metallica. No, no f and way was Metallica right. going to be on the radio. Like people thought that was the devil's rock. Right. Um, <laughs> Molly Crew though, Molly Crew kind of tried to look like the Devil's Rock. They had that shot at the Devil album with the pentagram on it. And they were yeah. all crazy looking on the back, and they had that Children of the Beast thing in the yeah. beginning. But they still got weird. radio play. They still they was, still played. Their, their it was weird because it was weird because they look like girls, but like they had <laughs> pentagrams on everything, and they're just like, "Yeah, we're gonna kill!" And it's just like, "Oh my god, I think that girl's angry at me." Right, and. Uh, People would tell you, it'd be like, yeah, Vince Neil beats up girls in bars and stuff. And like, what? Really? And Ozzy, you know, you'd hear Ozzy just because he had some kind of 
She has uh, the Black Sabbath connection, so everybody's like it's just legacy. Yeah, they're just yeah. gonna play him, but it's always gonna be like Crazy Train or something. <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> right. You're gonna play old Black Sabbath like constantly. You're never gonna hear anything new. You'd be like, you call up a radio station, you'd be like, Can I hear Iron Man? They'd be like, Oh yeah, Black Black Sabbath. You'd be, or you'd be like, Can I hear some Black Sabbath? They'll be like, Yeah, here's Iron Man. You'd be like, Cool. And you call it the next day, you'd be like, Hey, can you play some Ozzy? You'd be like, Yeah, here's a Ozzy version of Iron Man from a live concert. <laughs> like, no, that's not what I wanted. Right. Right. Jerks. But it was real limited, and in, 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 in you w- certainly wouldn't hear any of um And I think, like, as we were watching um, Metal, uh, it was there was really a divide. Uh, and and it, you didn't see this in a lot of other music genres, right? But there was the kind of the rock glam thing that was going on that got a lot of airplay, right? And some bands would be classified as metal, like let's say Bon Jovi, right? That are yeah. that are not metal, <laughs> you right. know. Like it's, it wasn't even remotely metal. It was just rock, and and not to take anything away from Bon Jovi and everything, but it was just rock, you know. But yeah, it's they, just rock and roll. They would put them on like metal shows, like hey, we're gonna have the Headbangers Ball tonight, and you'd see like Bon <laughs> gonna, Jovi we're, and. Um, we're gonna so. premiere Bon Jovi's new new video on Headbangers <laughs> Ball. Be there, You're like what? Yeah, exactly. And and then you would have like um uh, like heavier stuff where you would go like Iron Maiden and up, right? Because Iron Maiden yeah. I, I always felt like it's kind of threading the line there. Um, but you know, and then we get heavier, but you wouldn't get a lot of that really heavy stuff. Like ju- rarely, there'd be like one video, you know, yeah. and, and then the rest of the time they would be playing the more commercially acceptable stuff. But there was so much glam and everything that you got kind of like at that time, especially hair bands were like. I don't know. I didn't really care for them myself. I just was sick of them. Uh, they seemed like they were rewriting the same song over and over again. Occasionally there would be a good song. Like Skid Row would come out with a song or something, you know, and it would be like, oh, that's a good song, but I don't want to listen to the rest of their album. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know. That and, Youth Gone Wild, I loved that song when it came out. I was like, that's a great song. Right, and somebody was right. like, do you want to hear the rest of the album? I was like, no. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was just like, no, because you hear like 18 in life. Right, you're just like oh, and then the other one, the uh, um, the other sad one, singing in the rain or whatever. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and I like, think like no. a lot of times those glam bands were like they were trying to appeal just straight to chicks, right, girls. Right. And yes. like I'm a guy, like I don't want you to sing that song to me, dude. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, I'm right. not singing along with that love song that you're singing to them. Like no, uh, f- forget it. Uh, so yeah, so I, I never really care for, but we did know people that were like, especially you, right? Cause Don was in a band, uh, all the time, basically. He was constantly in the bands and going to band practice. Um, and I would go to his band practice and watch them play the same songs over and over and over again. I never had uh, a great appeal uh, for music, but let hold on on that thought though, because I wanted to talk about the glam thing and then we'll go back to that. (laughs) Um, but we did know people like Kovach and yeah. um bosa bosa right that were totally into glam like they were in glam bands and uh did like glam shows and everything mm-hmm. um what was your opinion and not of those guys but what was your yeah. opinion of the glam scene i know you weren't into it yourself you know what i mean but like um was it take it or leave it were you were you I, here's here's how, here's how here's how it worked out because i mean i've been obviously i i have three older brothers and they're all Zeppelin, Kiss, Rush. I mean, I was raised listening to music. Right. So in that in that eighties time frame, if you're looking at the progression of it all, right before Glam, there was like you were saying, like with Rat and stuff, there was the Twisted Sisters. Yeah. There was Wasp. There was New York um, Dolls, you know, coming out. Yeah, you know, that was the seventies, but whatever. Yeah. Um and, and there was somebody else I was just thinking of, I can't remember. Uh, whatever. You get the idea. Um like Twisted Sister, they weren't they weren't a glam band. Well, but they, yeah, they were, were more, yeah, like uh, Halloween but, glam or something. And they had like yeah, and they had like you know they had like all they each wore a different color, and they each had like you know striped outfits or like tassels or it, it was just like they had outfits and they had they dressed, you know what I mean? Not like rock stars or rock and rollers or whatever, you know. And uh, it was meant to <clears> shock <throat> you. It was like shock rock. Yeah, exactly. And I was in, I was into that. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. I, was, I, like I, was, I was, I was, yeah, you know, it's, 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 I can't think of the other band I was thinking of. <laughs> There's another one, uh, that was, uh, that's in the same vein. It's like, it's a it's hard rock. Quiet riot, right. I mean, they were, no, it's not quiet. Riot. 
but but that but you could use them because they use the stripe motif yeah. a lot. You right. know what I mean? So, anyways, you, you had that time period where you had bands like Twisted Sister and stuff, where I was into the music because it was heavier. They dressed up, which made it kind of like, oh, that makes it different. And then it slowly, and then you, I slowly morphed into the uh, hair bands, into the hair metal, because it was like then Poison, you know, oh, Motley Crue. There it is. That's the one. Because oh, Motley yeah, Crue, the Motley makeup Crue. and the yeah. costumes and the leather and the chains and you know what I mean. So it's like that stuff. It wasn't. It wasn't glam then. You know what I mean? It was like hard rock and music with dudes that were dressed up like scary. Like what yeah, is, they weren't singing those this? chick songs, right? Like it's a different exactly. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I had that, but then the hair metal came out and I kind of got, I, I was into the rat. I was into poison. Uh, the first album, uh, Cinderella. I think Cinderella is still good. They're they're Cause if you break it down, like if you look at it now and you break down like Cinderella, they're just like ACDC. It, it's, it's just like classic rock only. A little bit heavier, and they're talking about, hey, baby, don't go away, or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like you said, that it's just the lyrics that are different. And plus, they were called Cinderella and wore a lot of purple and looked like girls. But uh, I didn't last long in there. Like, a, you know what I mean? Like, the first albums for everybody. Like, I, you know what I mean? I got the first Cinderella album. I got the first Poison record. I got all the rat records. But, uh, but after that, it was just like, no, nah, I'm not into that. That's when I was like, I think I'm going to go with the Metallica side of all this stuff. And I, that's where I veered off into the Right. Right. The and, and, stuff. and, and then it, it eventually gets, you know, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that. It eventually gets into the, um, uh, where we had a, a, uh, metal. I think metal kind of like mainstream metal kind of went away because they kept redoing the same songs over and over again. It was basically chorus, verse, chorus, verse, some sort of bridge chorus, verse, Right. And uh, every band did the exact same thing, trying to look cute um, and rewriting just the same songs. And people just got sick of it. Right. And then so mm -hmm. when, you know, people people remarked that the grunge scene came out and, and killed metal. But I think metal killed itself. It, maybe it didn't still have the support from major labels, but you had bands like Pantera show up and right. um, they didn't have any problem selling records. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like there was a. Uh, there was a different sound of metal going on. There was a transformation going on that was no longer mainstream. Uh, but, the, you know, the bands were still there and, you know, still cutting records. Uh, you saw all these guys, like, cut their hair and try to become that. You know what I mean? Like, we're not really yeah. glam. You know what I mean? Like, we, right, we just right. did that for the label. But now we're, we wear leather and we have short yeah. hair and stuff. And it's like... Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not going to appeal to the kids, guys. And it's like watching Striper. I mean, they, they did that yellow and black thing for so long and talked about Jesus. And they said, you know what? Why don't we try coming out with an album that we don't talk about Jesus? Right. They're like, hey, everybody, look at us. We're normal people. And it's like, no, we know who you are. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. And, uh, but you know, and and so that yeah, the the, the music transition kind of changes at that point and. Um, grunge didn't last as long as I think the music industry was kind of hoping it would. It, it spawned some decent songs here and there, but it, it wasn't much of a, it really wasn't much of an impact. It was like a four year generational sh thing. You know what I mean? Like the, the generation that came after us listened to it maybe through high school and then it kind of went away. Um, well, that's the thing is most of those, most of the guys that were in the, that nineties time frame or whatever, or the right. grunge sound, most of them are dead. <laughs> if you think about it, yeah, you know what true. I mean. Yeah, Nirvana and Soundgarden and everything, right? Yeah, Mud, Mud Honey and right, and all, all kinds of different bands that should have been bigger a lot of, than a lot they of are. drugs going on in Seattle. I think God, messing yeah. people up. Um, but I think you know sounds just evolve. I mean, you go. It seems like when you're in high school, at least for us, like high school is four years for us, right? It's ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. <clears> uh, if you go again, like I did, maybe Don did, um, yeah. and maybe it's five years, but that seems like an eternity. Like, <laughs> so mm -hmm. like, you know, you're following bands and things are changing, but you know, you're listening to music and it goes on and on. But when you look back on life, it's like that four or five year period, like it goes by in a blink of an eye all the time now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and there's right. different kids generations going through those four years and, and they're listening to those bands, which I think just came out last week. You know what I mean? And probably came out eight years ago and it's been over, you know what I mean? And now they're listening right. to something else. Uh, so yeah, it, but that's just, that's just what happens when you get older. But anyway, going back to band practice. Oh, right. So Don constantly had guitar practice, which was okay. There wasn't much to do anyway. It was kind of like, you know, Hey, what are you doing after I'm going to band? I'm going to guitar practice or whatever. 
I, I couldn't go to guitar practice with him. That would have been dumb. Yeah, um, guitar practice. Yeah, no. <laughs> Could have sat outside of Music City and <laughs> stared at stuff. Right. I mean, you just had to be home. You were, you were still pretty young at that point anyway. Um, uh, and uh, uh, not that I was like, I was an older gentleman or something. I was no, a year right. older than Don, though. So, I mean, it, it kind of makes a difference when you're in your teens. Um, right. Yeah, but... Um, then you know you would play it like Chris Gilbert's, and uh, with um, yeah. uh, that was it wasn't um, it wasn't Black Diamond, but it was uh, whatever came after that. <laughs> Evil Ways. It was Evil Ways. Oh oh oh! You mean with, I, I? I was like, did you? Are you going back to like original? It was like me, me Gilbert and Roger Taylor. No middle, no no. In middle school. But, it was the yeah. it was the it was the normal set except Adam. We had Chris right, so it was George, right. Tom, and. And you and, and uh, you were playing guitar, uh, you know. Rhythm. No, no. You, I think you were at first. Mm. You, you, you transitioned oh, off I, guitar I was, when I, Burnett showed up. I yeah, yeah, I was going to. That's what the original plan was for me. Oh, dude, there's there's such a there's such a behind the music story <laughs> behind all this that it's not even right. We can't even touch on it. But yes, there was a there was a time where I was like, I want to be a guitar player, and they were like, okay, and I wasn't that good, so. I don't know. I, I know that, like, I think Tom knew and then you left the band and got kicked out, but then you guys later kicked Tom out of the band. I don't know. It's all weird. There's like, there's so, yeah. There's, uh, <laughs> there's so many. There's so many different. It so back and forth. It's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so like, you know, it's so like TV, you know, like how, what happens to bands and stuff. And it's like, like bad news. It's like watching bad news. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like we think we're that important, but we're really not. <laughs> He's out, man. He's out of here. Um, but I never, I, my brother, like when I was a kid, my brother played the saxophone and I had to hear this nonsense in, in, <laughs> in this, in the seventies in Detroit when he was learning how to play. And it was just awful. It just sounded like a dying animal in the other room. And I could always hear him breaking reeds, um, because it would go, Wah! and he'd get all high and stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, I was like, I don't ever want to do this. I don't want to play. This is just torture listening to this every day and band practice in a way was kind of torture. Uh, I like hanging out with my friends. I like what you guys are trying to do. You know, I like being part of it. Uh, hearing the trooper uh, 400 Over. times is just too much. Like I just, I, I just, I couldn't handle it. Um, mm -hmm. It's it just kind of how it was, but I understand the purpose of it. You guys have to practice and you have to do it right. over. There's like this, like you just repeat, 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 uh, keep, you know, working on it, et cetera. And, um, yeah, man, I just couldn't, I don't have the, it's, it's like when I go bowling, right? Like bowling to me is really boring because like bowling, you have to do the same thing exactly the same every time. Like that's what you're trying to perfect. You're like standing right. in the same place. You're walking down the, uh, you're, you know, throwing the ball down the lane and you want to get this whole thing into like a perfect sort of, um, uh, rhythm going where you do the exact same thing. I'm not a robot, man. I want to mix it up. You know, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to just like do the same thing all the time. That's why I'm not good at video games too. Like I play video games all the time, but most people just like explore, exploit patterns. They're just like, you know, first you duck, then you jump, then you shoot. Then, you, and I'm yeah. always like, why don't, why didn't the developers just come up with like some randomization in the AI so that like you couldn't anticipate what the opponent is going to do because he's going to switch it up. And they didn't like most games are patterned. And so most people that are quote unquote good at video games are just memorizing patterns in order to get through different things. And that just really always irked me as being kind of boring. Um, and so like, I, I never really got like that into, um, sort of completing video games. I like the gaming experience, but I never got into like completing a lot of those early games. And we're talking like, you know, um, Donkey Kong and, Dig Dug and Pac-Man and all that sort of stuff. Not later yeah. games where they, you know, had more design. Um, but yeah. So anyway, music was kind of the same way. It's just, it's like, I like listening to it for what it is. I don't want to know, like when you and Tom will sit in a room and, and, and with your guitars and everything. And Tom's like, Hey man, were you playing a four, two, four, or was that a four, okay. four, four? Cause that sounded like a four, two, four. And I'm just like, e I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't want, yeah, I don't want to know any of that. Cause I think it'll ruin it for me. Like I, I just will hear that in music and be like, <laughs> uh, it doesn't sound right. You know what I mean? Based on like, yeah. like not because of the way I feel about the music, you know what I mean? But because 
like Tom <clears throat> wouldn't approve of it or something. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know if yeah. I'm making sense, but I, I don't like the structure of it all. But that's that's good. That's that's why there's people like me in the world that just want to buy music and listen to it. And then there's people like you that want to create. But I was always kind of interested in that. Like, what made you want to create music? Because most people hate everything and everybody criticizes everything. And so, like, even if you came out with something great, there's always going to be people that are going to be like, ah, it's awful. You know what I mean? Like, well, how did, like, what made you want to make art uh, with music? I, I, I don't know. Honestly. I mean, I, I, here, I grew up, <clears throat> I grew up a Kiss fan. And so I would, when I was younger and I was at home, I come home from school, a latchkey kid, you know, I come home, my parents are at work and I'd be by myself and I would go get my Kiss records and I'd put them on the radio or on the stereo. Right. And, uh, and I would play them. And then I would run around the living room like I was Kiss. Like, sure. I'm like, yeah, you know, and I, that I did everything, you know, I, I, I acted like I was in concert pointing at people and come on, everybody, here's the next song, you know, I was doing all that stuff. And it just kind of, my brothers all, my, my, I have three brothers. Al played guitar, Bobby played drums, and Ian played guitar. So there was always a guitar in the house, there was always a drum set in the house. And, I guess just, and, and we had an organ. I, I took organ lessons when I was in second grade. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. First, first grade? Yeah, first first grade. Second grade. Somewhere around there. Uh, that did not last long. It was mm, a couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, that's probably why I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so it's like, even growing my mom's my mom used to sing all the time. My mom had a- Really? My mom was, yeah, she was one of those ladies that could just sing a, sing a tune. Oh shit! Wow. A- acapella. Your dad can and, whistle really well. And my dad, and that's yeah, and that's the, the next thing is like my dad could whistle. So there was always music or music musical things going on. Plus, it kind of helped me with timing and just learning how to keep rhythms because I had Bobby playing drums all the time. So I mean, I would just be sitting. I don't know if you, I don't know if you're ever at my house when he was practicing, but you would just sit in the house and all you could hear is him up there. <laughs> and it's like he had headphones on and was listening to albums playing to the albums and i learned the songs through listening to just the drums because i'd be like oh i know what song that is and i could go through that song in my head while he's playing the drums and i'd hear it you know and just be like oh yeah that's awesome so it's like i've always had music uh, but it's like you around. wanted to do it right you were exposed to it i was exposed to it but you wanted to make it you know what I mean? Like you wanted to create music and, and maybe you just wanted to be that on stage. Um, but I just wanted to be famous. I just wanted to be Kiss. But it, had, it takes work. Crazy. Like you had to sit that you, you went to guitar practice all the time. You learned yeah. how to play guitar. You, you sang, you, you were in bands, you went to practice and band practice and everything. It, you probably put more effort into that than you did like school. <laughs> oh yeah. And I didn't put much effort into the music. I'll tell you that. No, you don't think so. <laughs> no. oh, okay. I, I, by far, by uh, no, the, the amount of time I spent doing that, I should be way better than I am. Like a couple weeks ago, I went over to my brother's house. He told, come on over, bring your guitar. We'll jam, we'll jam some tunes and stuff. Hardest thing I've ever done. And it's cover tunes. It's like songs that were already written by other people. Well, because dude, you haven't played in like God knows how long yeah, though. I mean, but it's not it, practice. It's not even that though. It's I mean, I pray, I play I play guitar all the time. Oh, I have no. a guitar. I have, I got one. I may have a guitar for you. By the way. I got a guitar sitting right next to me. Okay, <laughs> and I got a guitar over at my girlfriend's house, just sitting there. It's like for whatever I want. When I had the urge, she's like, "Go ahead, go ahead and play. Do whatever you want to do." She's sick and tired of hearing that you talk about coming to band practice. <laughs> she's sick and tired of hearing. She's just like, oh, Hotel California again, huh? It's like, yeah, let's do this, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, but that's the thing is like, I'll start playing the song. I don't, may not know the whole thing, or I may not know right. the right chords, or I may not know the right whatever. And I can't ad lib. I can't do anything. I'm not, I'm not that good. You know what I mean? It's like, I know what I know and that's it. So it's like, but you I, find I it, you really... find it enjoyable even when you don't know it or what? Like you're still having yeah. fun. Yeah. I could sit here and just pluck away and, and do stuff. That's what, that's why I got this keyboard here. I was, I was, when I lived in that apartment down in Columbus, when I first got divorced, I was recording stuff on uh, 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 programs and stuff. And I had like a little, I turned my little apartment there into like kind of a, a recording studio and was trying to write things, not for, not like, oh, I'm going to write an album and sell it and make millions of dollars. I was just like, hey, let's see if I can write a song. Turns out without Tom Packard, I can't do much, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what is the, 
was your, I'm curious, like Tom, we know this guy, Tom, and Don was in bands with him a lot. And Tom's a, I would say he's a really good guitar player. And, uh, he, he was always, um, technically pretty accurate. Um, mm-hmm. g- growing up, he, 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 he just in general was a smart guy. And I think he, he understood his music theory and, uh, um, you know, but also yeah. played at this certain level. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't trying to be Ingve Malmsteen or something on stage, you know, like, he, yeah. or he wasn't going to be like flamenco or something guitar. I mean, like he was just playing rock like yeah. everybody else. Um, but I'm curious, like, uh, Tom was more driven to be so like, he was just constantly on guitar. Like what, where do you think that comes from with that dude? Like, what's that all about? Like, I don't, I don't desire <laughs> desire. But like, you know, he has all this talent. He's never really stopped playing, but he's Not in these, laziness. he's in these, I haven't heard his new band, but he's not in Uh-oh. bands that are going to make it. Like, you know right. what I mean? Like he's in bands yeah. that are just, they're just Thanks. I was garage the bands place, but... or something. Well, I think you guys probably, <laughs> when you were adversary, probably had the best chance of making it. Turnbuckle, yeah. maybe, but that was a joke. Adversary was. Uh, you guys had some good songs. That was the one chance. Um, but no, but I don't mean that. Yeah. Like I mean, like now, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he has talent now that he could be. Like Tom could totally be in some kind of other type of. Like he could be in some acoustic coffee club band or something, right? right. But he's playing yeah. like hardcore. Um, uh, this new band is this new band is in is like sludge rock blues. Is it? Yeah, of, like stoner rock. Does the bluesy. singer sing, or is it just more of? The, yes, yes. No, no, no screaming, no screaming. He's a singer. Well, maybe that's good. I haven't heard that. I, 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 I just, I don't know. I, I, I just always find it really weird that he just because he 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 could go to guitar tryouts for bands and probably land he, a gig pretty easily, and so I don't understand why he does he, he signed do that. he signed up for that he signed up for that best guitars in cleveland contest guitar when we were in high school or whatever yeah, yeah guitar awards when we were in high school and he didn't you know what i mean he didn't tell anybody about that until somebody found out and told everybody it was just like <laughs> oh jeez somebody else was probably there everybody has egos right yeah. um yeah. but, but, he no, but, but, but right. he's, he's that, that kind of he's that good though i mean like you yeah. know he, he he's technically that good i mean i haven't heard him write something where I was like, I want to listen to that all the time. <laughs> right. But that's not what I mean. I mean, like he knows this shit and, and he's, he's always been really good. I just don't on, I've always just sat there and kind of wondered about it. Like, I wonder if Anita wonders about it too. Like, when are you going to make it big Tom? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Or either that or when are you going to stop? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. When, when are you done with this? Kick in or something. Right. I mean, he really enjoys it and I, and I get it. I just don't know where it comes from with him because he's, um, well, it's just like anything anybody likes, you know what I mean? Like, why do some people, why do you want some people want to sit there and knit? Why do some people want to, you know, go it's like hike, he's, he's climb devoted mountains? his life to it in a way, man. Yeah, like, he loves music. It, well, yeah, no, I know he does. I, I'm not take. I'm not trying to take anything. No, away I know, from I know. I'm just trying to explain I, how. I, 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 I'm know? just, I'm just saying. Like, I think he, I think he could have made I, it. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Not on his own. Yeah. He's not going to be guy man dude or right, something. Right. <laughs> but I, but uh, he he Bucket could have been in a band that that went somewhere, and he yeah. he seems to struggle there. And I and I'm not you know I'm not quite sure why that is. Like I I just don't I don't know. Came from Cleveland, maybe. But we've got some bands that are you know. Yeah. Eh, okay, that could be true too. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, everybody. It's like everybody always goes like you know. There's there's lots of famous bands from Cleveland, and it's like yeah. Ugh really and it's like people say mushroom head and it's like okay they've toured and stuff like that but they're not really like maybe it's like mainstream a, that's a complicated thing like they 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 say to tom they're like hey you want to join the band and he's like well what are you gonna pay me and what, what kind of benefits do you have and you're like <laughs> well oh, i got mind. where it's like you know, hate breed goes to frank and they're like you want to be in hate breed and frank's like oh yeah you know yeah, right. he's in hate breed yeah. um that's what tom was waiting for that big break <laughs> Somebody to come to him, right, rather than him yeah. trying out or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Remember, I had the I had the hostile Amish come up to me and ask me to sing for him. Oh, really? Yeah. You, you know the weird thing. That. You know the weird thing about you, Don, is like in high school, like you're not shy, but you're quiet. You're quiet, yes. dude. Right? Like I could talk right. to you and and everything, but you weren't like I could be a, kind of obnoxious in the hallway and scream people's names at the top of my lungs out and stuff. 
Um, right. Don was usually pretty quiet, but Don can get on stage. Like you can handle a crowd. Like you have the ability to like, you know, same with comedy. Like you can, you can, um, uh, you can take care of yourself on stage, which is an unusual gift. So I can understand why somebody would want you to sing and perform, you know, <laughs> which is, which is weird because when I'm on stage, my, I'm just so nervous. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like Oh my God, this is the worst. And I'm like, Sh-. Sometimes I'm like shaking and I'm like, can they see me shake? Can they see me shake? I think that's <laughs> natural though. I mean, I've heard that yeah. from people that are famous, they still get nervous going out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that I mean, you're, all these eyes are on you, but you still manage it really well. You know, you I mean, know, I'm you know just, what you're doing. I'm just saying from, from a very early age, like in first grade, I was always given the lead in the school programs. I was really? always, uh, you know, I was tops in the music class. They always like, okay, we need somebody to sing this. Okay. Anderson will do that. I'm not bragging because I was only like five, but, uh, yeah. Special child. Yeah. No, I think it, I think it takes some guts to just get up there and do it. You know, it's easy to do like, um, like Jimmy Carlin. Right. Like he's a talented guitar player. Like he really is. He, right. he can play guitar really, really, really well. But no doubt, no doubt. he was probably too. He's probably even today. He's probably too shy for stage. Like he too can stiff. He just stand there. Yeah. And I think he can. You can hide when you play an instrument. I mean, you really can. You can just kind of sit back in uh, in the corner of the stage like, you just you know, and play and be technically accurate but not have any kind of stage presence because you're you know you're you're worried about all of that but you know to actually be the front man of a, of a group in any kind of in any kind of situation um yeah it takes a special kind of talent unless you're throwing <laughs> your voice out there i mean you got people could make fun of the way you sing they could make fun of the way you look you know that's why i started screaming i was like screw this i'll start screaming that way they can't mess with me <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you obviously that, you're, you're you're obviously driven and you enjoy it, and you're st- and so you're still doing it sort of now, like you said, you're playing with your brothers or whatever. Yeah, and I and I and I and I want to I want to get all this equipment set up so I can like try, like I said, I still want to try to write a song or I want to try to do something, you know, not not just to sell it or not to try to make money or make get my name out there or nothing. It's like oh, that that time's gone. That's that's past me. You know right. what I mean? It's, Nobody's going to be like, hey, did you hear that 50-year-old guy's song? Like, yeah, he's really connected to the kids. Uh, <laughs> you know. But it's just like, I just want to do it just because I've never, <clears throat> when I said, when, when I was talking about, like, I've never written a, a good song without Packard. That's honest. That's the honest truth. It's like, I've never really written a song. Like, I wrote all the words and all the lyrics. I could do that stuff, the lyricist and all that. And then, you know, but there was like, him and I would sit there and he would be like, he would start playing something and I'd be like, no, that's not it. And he would start playing something else. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, that's not it. You know, give me something like this. And then I would just hum something. Or blah, 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 blah. And then he would, you know, so it's like, I never really wrote anything. You know what I mean? Right, if, if, right. if anything, he wrote the majority of everything musically with, with little tweaks where I'd be like, Hey, why don't you put a break in here? Or why don't you, you know, I don't think that's unusual it? for bands. I mean, I don't think George yeah. is writing anesthesia at home. Right. You know, well, Adam, no, Adam maybe was doing marching band drum. solos. Well, see, and, Adam, and Adam would be like, well, what do you guys, he, he'd be like, I wrote the drums. And it's like, you played a four, four, shut up. It's <laughs> right. like, that's, you're, you're playing the drums. It's that you didn't write anything. You know? <laughs> exactly. No, I so, get what you're saying, I, and that would be kind of cool. I mean, you know, you spend all that time learning it, and you love it. You know, if you could actually write something yourself, you know, yeah. get a four track or something, and um, you know, yeah. record some and, and or whatever. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> it makes total sense. You know, you got the talent. Why not? Right. But you I get love your brother music. Bobby to play drums for you. I love music so much. I, I I I downloaded. Well, I didn't download. I, I added songs to my Spotify list from back in the day. I was telling you this. I think yeah, last week, right. Whatever. Last time we talked, mm-hmm. <laughs> like all the old sabotage, like Killer Dwarves, like all the Dock and like all the stuff that I used to listen to. Dude, I was listening to Streets the other day in the shower. Like yeah. a song because it's on random, so like a song will just pop up, and Believe came on. Oh, it's a and, that's a great song. And I haven't heard it in so long. And I started saying, I started crying. <laughs> it's, a, I was it's, like singing, it's a great it's like my, one of my favorite songs ever yeah. yeah i was like singing it and crying in the shower like not in a bad way not like no oh, i know because yeah, music moves but, you right? yeah it was just like oh my god i haven't heard this in so long and i can't believe it. and then the lyrics and all the, the, the music itself and i was just like so i've been listening I've been halloween and all this old stuff that we used to listen to back in high school and I was yep. just, 
this is great. Like I can't, <laughs> right. I can't believe I forgot about all this stuff. Yeah. yeah no, I, a uh, hundred, I do the same thing. A hundred percent. I love, I love you. Especially when you like, you start like hearing something like from walls of Jericho or something. And you're like, Oh yeah. Like I used to live. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what the, the, the whip is going to get you. I texted you that earlier right. because the other day a song came on a sabotage song. And I was like, I have a feeling I should know this. Like, I think, <laughs> I think I should. And then all of a sudden the guy through the course, I was like, the whip is going to get you. I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> you know, right. I'm like, right. So happy. Yeah. It, it's, um, it's, 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 it's weird because like, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like some of our friends that we hang out with, listen to a lot of classic rock that I, um, I don't, let's say I don't hate classic rock or anything, but I think like, because classic rock got played on a lot of radio stations in Cleveland right. over repetitively over. for years and years and years, I would rather not listen to it. Like I would rather listen to what you were just listening to. Like I'd rather yeah. listen to old metal um, from that day. Uh, yeah. If I had to listen to something that like a group of people liked, right. Cause I, yeah. in my spare time, I listen to a lot of eclectic weird shit. So I, no yeah. one's going to understand I the mean, music I listen to. Some, <laughs> someday my nieces are going to go through my record collection when I'm dead. And they're going to be like, what is all this? Like yeah. he's got like crazy, you know, death metal from Sweden yeah. on here. And then over here, he's got some fucking synth wave techno <laughs> thing from the eighties. And we're like, I, quiet. I'm a bird. That's what I'd we do. Pass out. I'd pass out in that chair in your apartment. And then like, <laughs> I'd wake up and there's like candles lit. And there's some kind of crazy, like, Whoa going out in the background i'm like what the? i'm like looking around i'm like what's going on what's going on here like i know is he gonna kill needed me a smoke machine and make it all right yeah yeah i was like well, i left my pizza in the microwave in the oh. but I, like i can't like ah it's like i you know i i love the guy and everything but he is like at some point i don't he just stopped listening to anything new and he and he right. just got closed in on the 70s mostly and it stayed there um, ever since. And, um, I can't be that way. I, I'm not, I just, I appreciate that he likes all of that. I don't take it away from him, but I just can't do that. Like I, I if I'm in a place and they're just going to keep playing 70 songs all the time, like I was not, I was a child in the seventies. You know what I yeah. mean? I'm rolling around on a big wheel. It's not my, it's, it's not my decade. Like it's a cool decade, but it's not my decade. Just cause I had some toys back then doesn't mean I want to embrace like the, the adult culture that was going on then because I wasn't part of it. Like I was part of like the eighties and the nineties. Right. You know, and, and uh, going forward, like the seventies to me happened. Right. But it's like, I don't know. I, I yeah, just... but like for me, that's why it's different for me though, because I was, I was raised listening to that all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. I didn't have, I didn't have a connection to it. I didn't, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I would hear Boston's uh, more than a feeling. Oh. More than a feeling. And I loved that song when I was a kid, right? And but and when I was a kid, I was like, I used to think the lyrics were like, God is still dreaming more than right. a, and I was just like, you know what I mean? I didn't right. know. No, I just heard it. Yeah. You know? So it's like I didn't I didn't I wasn't connecting the dots or anything like that. I just know those songs from when I was a kid. You know, it's just like, right. oh, of course I get I'm living in Cleveland. If you ever <clears throat> Anybody out there, if you ever come to Ohio or like Cleveland area, the metropolitan northeastern Ohio, whatever. You turn on the radio, you're pretty much going to get a steady diet of Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. I think it's true anywhere. I think all of those. I, I, th I think it is. I think it is. It's like the classic rock stations are all the same. You know what I mean? It's like, just, and then it's always the same Bob song. Like, like, They're just chewing out the same shit all the time. Yeah. And it's always the same song. It's like, ugh, it's, it's just, it's, it's, there's so much, there's so much more music out there. Right. And this is, oh, I was thinking about this earlier. I think this is, this is why Z Rock didn't last so long because here you have a station with a certain genre of music, heavy metal music, which everybody was like, oh my God, a radio station that plays 24 hour metal. Right. Like right. every morning, my alarm clock would go off and it was either Master of Puppets or Angel of Death or something. And it woke me up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, it, and, and, the, and the reason why it didn't work one of the reasons why it didn't work is because there's no money in it because the people who listen to the metal are all broke, you know, and they're all, <laughs> you know, so the people are like, I, Hey, we need to get advertisers. And the advertisers are like, yeah, we could advertise on there, but nobody's buying anything because they're just like, it was, the, it was too early. It was too, because yeah. there was still that whole Geraldo Rivera Satanism 
Uh, so now it was a bad scene, and no, the commercial aspect of well, it, nobody went that's, behind it. Like I have a feeling that's probably probably part of it. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a, maybe that's a small segment of it with the uh, with the advertising and stuff, and not being able to be like, yeah, we could we we got millions of people who listen. How many of them are spending money? <laughs> About five of them. You know, right, like right. none of them are doing it. So it's like. Nowadays, the radio stations, that's all they're all about. They're just like, well, we just need to get people in and out. So let's play, you know, Our House by Madness over and over again. Uh, yeah. No, you know, you know, I mean, radio stations are basically dead anyway. I mean, it's, everybody's got cell phones with music on them or something. You got to right. be in a weird situation where you have to listen to the actual radio. And, you know, there's more commercials than there are songs most of the time anyway. It's, right. it's, it's, just, it's just awful. Uh, and, you know, and it wasn't quite as bad when we were young. I don't think the commercials were laid on as heavy. And I, I also think that like there used to be major advertisements going into radio. So the, the commercials were maybe more entertaining or maybe more interesting. They may be, you know, pitching movies that, you know, or, or um, you know, some new thing coming to town or whatever, where now it's just like, they're getting whatever they can, you know? Right. And it's just like, just, anybody selling a pillow or something is going to be on there. And it's just right. not, I don't know. It's, it's mattresses. Everything's mattresses. Like I, I don't care. I don't care. Um, no, I, again, like I, everybody has their opinions about music. I was just venting a little bit about the fact that like, we just grew up in a, in a weird universe where like the music we liked wasn't really played on the radio. And, um, certainly you could listen to pop music. You know, if you were somebody that grew up on pop music, pop music would be on all the time. If you like the new song by a, a pop artist, you would hear it on the radio as much as you wanted to. I guess if you like when we were growing up, Debbie Gibson, you would Jesus, always hear Jesus. Debbie Gibson, you know, like, but if we liked King Diamond or Metallica or Iron Maiden, you have to uh, watch Geraldo. Yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> to see King Diamond on TV. Right. You just, uh, you didn't have, you know, it wasn't on a radio. You had to buy cassettes yeah. or uh, vinyl, uh, eventually CDs. But um, I mean, you even could, back in, the, yeah. oh, go ahead, finish. No, I was just going to say, it was even when CDs first came out, you couldn't. There were like portable CD players. Oh. They blew, and uh, they ate batteries like crazy. And they also, you didn't have mixes on CDs at that point. Nobody was burning CDRs or anything. So CDs had little utility versus cassette tapes. Yeah. Well, that I was going to say is uh, back in the day, like before the internet and stuff like that, I used to, the kids in elementary school used to give me, they'd give me a blank cassette at a dollar and they'd be like, I want kiss hotter than hell. <laughs> and, I, and I would go home and I would record hotter that's than hell awesome. on a cassette for him. And I'd bring it back to school and be like, here you go. And it's like, that's how you would. You, that's how you used to do it back. At, everybody's like, "Oh, I wonder how I used to get music back in the day." You didn't have the internet. You didn't have anything like that. You'd right. have to. You would. You. Would, it's like if I, if you called me up, it's just like that time at the, when you're the man you walk, and I came walking up. I was like, "Hey, Kevin, what's up?" And you went. You were, I know you know the story because you looked at me and you said, "There's a new sabotage record over there, <laughs> Butter Ballet," and I went, "What?" And you go, "Yep, it just came out." Because you didn't know. We didn't. No, nope, there was, there no, was press no releases. unless you read magazines all the time, which were expensive, and nobody did. Right, you, you had and no idea what was coming. If, if you if you think about like that whole sabotage period for for you and me, every other day, one of us was going into a record store and being like, "Fight for the rock." What the right. hell is this? Right, you know, empower the night. Like dungeons what? are like, calling, sirens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was and crazy. That, and that's and that's how you. And then it's like I would go and get it. I bought it. And I'd listen to it, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the greatest!" This is great. And then you'd come over, and you'd be like, "Let me listen to it." I'd be like, "Here you go," and you listen to it. And you, if you were lucky to have a dual cassette player, you could record it onto a cassette for you. Here you go. Here's your copy. Go. You could also like kind of gauge popularity based on like you know, based on what people were wearing, right? Like if somebody had on like a DRI patch or something, you might be like, "All right, well that's a band I've heard of, right?" So maybe mm -hmm. if you were bored and you were in like the store or something, you might pick something up by them, listen to it. Yeah. Maybe not like it, and and uh, or maybe be into it, you know. Um, where then you would see something else, like you would, you know, you just look at some cover art, for instance, of an album, yeah. and just be like, because um, there was like, you know, Metal Blade was always trying to, or whatever was trying to sell you something like this is that was that chick singer bitch or something like that. Yeah. And you'd look at it and you'd be like, I'm not gonna like this. This is gonna be rubbish. You know what right. I mean? Right. Um, but then, like a lot of times, I would just buy things like 
I would buy Yngwie Malmsteen because he had pretty crazy cover art. You know what I mean? Like it's like fighting right. a dragon, and the flames coming out of his guitar or something. And you're like, how bad could this be? There's going to be at least one song on this yeah. record that I can listen to, right? sometimes right. that was a struggle but you know i would buy a lot of stuff like that and then you would find you know anthrax or you know or oz would be there and you'd be you'd be like you know you should buy that phantom of the opera ep by iron maiden it's good and you'd be like but you oh. did that you you did that with me plenty of times you're like look at this and i'm like what is this you're like black sabbath and bob rules and i'm like i don't know about that you're like, <laughs> that's great buy idea. it <laughs> you're like you gotta buy it and i was like all right and i bought it it's great of course i found out later on yeah, yeah but that's, that's we all did that to each other, right? Like, yeah. you know, and that that's how it was. Um, now nowadays, it's a lot different. People are like, "Hey, look, do you listen to this?" And it's like, "No, I don't." Well, what do you know? And it's like, <laughs> what, do you, "What do you mean? What do I know?" It's like, "Oh, you suck. Your music taste sucks." I'm like, what? Everybody always got to argue with everybody nowadays. Like, this band's terrible. And it's like they sold thirty million records. Are they really terrible? They're not. <laughs> you know, it's, you you just don't like them. You know, you're I mean? not in the mood for them, or you like yeah. this eclectic thing that nobody else likes, or whatever. Which is fine. Go do your thing and leave these people alone. <laughs> right. mm. Nobody has to measure up to you, you know your uh, your thing. But I mean, we did a lot of that when we were young too. I mean, we you know we hated everything that was mainstream, and we only liked metal. And uh, right. you know, I think everybody goes through that sort of period. And and but I I would still prefer to listen to that stuff that I. Um, uh, grew up around but i listen today i still listen to mostly new music um i go to this website called metal injection and they have a, a weekly roster of new releases and they put up the songs and you can listen to them they're all youtube links nice. and uh what i will do is i'll be working and i'll listen to each one of these new songs and some of them are, well, i would say most of them are awful uh, you know, and I'll be right. like, I'll, I'll give a song a shake, man. I'll listen to the whole thing through, but then occasionally I'll hear something that hits me and I'll be like, that's pretty good. I'm going to buy the album, you know? And that's yeah. kind of, I, I still do that because I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of flexible like that with music, but, um, it seems like most of the people, I don't know what happens. Like you get out of high school, you have to start paying bills. Um, right. people don't want to buy music anymore. And then now there's <laughs> streaming services and people basically load up on the old stuff. And, like, I've tried to introduce people like Cease or, and stuff, like, here, you know, listen to this. And then he's like, yeah, I don't I don't like that kind of grumbly lyrics or, you know, singing yeah, style right. or whatever. And it's like, all right, well, unfortunately, most metal music now is that way. Like, I can't. Right. I'll write a letter to them and tell right. them that you don't like that. But you're going to be hard-pressed yeah. to find something that is, you know, the way it, you know, the way it was. And even then, he probably wouldn't like it because he only likes – what he what used like. to like, you know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, he's just not going to, he's not one of those guys that's going to embrace something new. Unless you were like, I don't know, you had to like, you chained him to a post or something and you're like, you're going to listen to this album three times in a row, you know, until you start popping your head. Right. And then the fourth time you hear it, you're going to know all these songs, mister. Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't know. It, it, it happens with age. I think people become less flexible and uh, they, they, um, they don't get into they don't get into new stuff. It's unfortunate. Yeah. All right. Well, we're at an hour, dude. So, um, you know, did you have any other comments about music? Yeah, I'm not that? done yet. I'm talking about the thing that I love the most, and that's music. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, you I'm know what? Much. We'll probably get on this. We'll get on this again, just like comic books. Uh, we'll I was going to say, next, next week we'll talk about comic books, and, we'll, <laughs> and then we'll break into a music conversation. Yeah, I think we'll lose too many people with comic books. I, I watch yeah. a lot of YouTube videos, and there's a lot of these um, guys and in, in gals making videos that are, they kind of poke fun at a lot of that manga and anime and stuff. And I've watched a fair bit of uh, uh, anime and read uh, a fair bit of manga, uh, but I, I don't absorb the volumes that these people do you know yeah, so when yeah. they start talking about certain characters and things i'm like yep i don't i have no idea what you guys do <laughs> you know just right. spend 20 years of your life just like just, that's all you watched or something i guess you know i get it but uh, uh, that's my age like, showing i don't even know how you know which ones to watch like that's probably like just like the music thing like you have to have people tell you to watch certain ones or whatever because there's just like a bazillion of them and you know which ones are relative and which one you know not just which ones are good but like which ones are culturally significant like because if i watch any more manga or, or anime with people in high school you know and girls in mm. english dresses and shit i'm gonna kill myself i, I can't Ugh. handle it i can't stand that stuff no 
Uh, all right. Anyway, we're just being. <laughs> but thanks no for uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, we'll be back Thank next you. week. Well, no, week no, after. No, not next week. Uh, week after. You you guys will probably get a show on Memorial Day weekend, but it, we're not going to record one. So whenever we d- don't have a show, we'll be we'll be back with a show right after that. Uh, thanks yeah. again. If you want to write into the show, it's oblast at vgn.us. And if you want to be a guest, let me know, and we'll give you all the details and, and get you on. Uh, thanks yeah. again. Have a good night. Peace. Peace. You've been listening to Oblast with Don and Kevin. If you'd like to write into the show, send an email to oblast at vgn.us. That is VGN as in video game news. And be sure to check out our Patreon page, which is at patreon.com forward slash VGN, where you can get all of our shows, our videos, and some musings. Uh, Be sure to tune in each week for new episodes on our Patreon page or every other week on the public RSS feed that you're subscribed to now. Thanks for listening, and good night. Peace.